Hey guys, and welcome to Do You Like Gear? All right, so I got my hands on this Fender Mustang. It, uh, Mustang 4, I think it's a version 2. Anyway, um, so it had a problem. Um, basically, the guy I bought it from said, on the back side, the power button just popped off. That's what he told me. And... I bought it and that's what I saw. Basically there is there are two metal U-shaped components and then the plastic on off switch. It's pretty simple. Um, so I'm going to tell you about two ways to fix this issue if, if that's what's wrong with your Mustang amp or any similar solid state amp. Alright so here's what I did. Um, I basically took the amp and set it on its face uh, on the carpet um, so that you know so no damage would happen to the front side of it and once once I put it on its face I I, I knew that inside this plastic switch the two metal u-shaped components needed to go in one way on the u-shape there's a little metal um, ball kind of shape at the end on each of them. I, I assume that both of those were going to face the same way. And I just kept messing with it until I could feel the switch um, feel like it did before it was broken or, and kind of make that clicking sound. And then as soon as I got that in, I plugged it in, um, plugged it in the wall, it turned on. Okay. So then... I was like, that's great. I have an idea. I grabbed some super glue and I just super glued this so that it's fixed on position. And so if you decide to do that, your options are to unplug and plug it back in when you want to use it. Or another simple option is to get a power supply, a uh, power strip like this. And now you have an on-off switch. Pretty straightforward. Turn it on. And then you can come over here and see it's working. You got your liquid solo American 90s. That's pretty awesome. Okay. So there is a second way to fix it. And that is obviously to order a new switch and replace the switch. All right, so I ordered this switch um, from amprepairparts.com. Um, it ran about $3.95 for the switch and then about $5 for shipping. So for under 10 bucks, if you can get a good price on the amp itself like I did, um, you can you can find a pretty decent deal if all that is wrong is this switch and everything else is perfect like the amp I found. So let's get into actually doing the repair. The first time when I took it apart to figure out how I was going to fix it, I did take it completely apart including take the speakers out and all these things. and. That's when I decided I was going to videotape how to do it because you don't need to take out the speakers and all of these things. All right, so basically, um, I've got a magnetic bowl. I've got my Ryobi screwdriver. I'm going to try to film and unscrew this amp. First thing I'm going to do is remove the top screws. There's four screws in the top. One thing to be aware of is that some of the screws are metal screws, like this. They have a flat top and very fine threading. And then some screws in the amp are wood screws. You don't want to make, get them mixed up. I almost made that mistake when I was taking this apart, but noticed in time they look exactly the same, but some are metal screws and some are wood screws. OK, 
Okay. Okay, so to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to turn the amp upside down. Um, it also makes it easier to get to the components because actually this top part is a, a, a metal encasing and then on the other side is where, where all the parts are. So let's flip over the amp. Anyway, there are three screws here to be removed. And these ones are also metal screws. In fact, if I think, I think if you start this project and see a wood screw, you probably don't need to remove it. Just put it back in. Unless you're doing something else with the amp that requires it. Okay. I may need to flip it over. Okay. That made it a little bit easier flipping it, flipping it over like that. Okay, so after getting this first wire um, out, um, it actually pulled out the whole metal piece because it is soldered in. I didn't realize they're, they are soldered in. Um, so going forward, um, basically these are just shrink wrap tubing around them and the, around the solder points. So to do the repair, we're going to desolder the four connecting um, pieces and remove this shrink wrap tubing and then um, okay this is the second one So, uh, before you start doing any repair like that, this, you may want to take a picture ahead of time. Um, I'm videotaping, so that will be fine, but taking a videotape ahead of time of what the cabling looked like before you start taking it apart.
Okay. Now I've got all four cables undone. Okay, so pulling on the face of it with a flathead screwdriver seems to be working pretty well. Okay, so now I've got the part out. About that, so I just ran to Home Depot and picked up um, some connectors like this. And so I'm gonna use these on all four ends. And I think that's gonna work out pretty well because it provides a, um, the protection over the metal that the shrink tubing would provide. And also, um, will make connections easier. Soldering is just pretty difficult in that tight space. And I think this is gonna work out. All right. So first thing, we'll put some of these ends on each of the tips. Um, I want to get off as much of the tubing as possible. Um, and then straighten out the ends. Okay. So these are pretty easy to install. First end is in. And again, I'm going to straighten out the edges. Ideally, I would want to clip off all of the old end, but honestly, these are so tight in here. I think if I do clip them shorter, I won't have enough cable left. This is definitely working out much better. on there pretty good.
and, and that one's on pretty good, so let's finish time, uh, finish plugging these in. Okay, and that should do it. Okay, so I just made sure that the white connection should both be on the bottom and the black connection should both be on the top. So by that I mean this white goes underneath, this white is on the bottom connector. Um, I'm confident that that's set up right, so let's uh, kind of put it back together and turn it on, see if it is right. All right, it's plugged in. Let's power it up. Cool. That did the trick. We've once again got a working amplifier. This time it's working without being glued together, but with a working power switch. I'm gonna get this amp put back together. I won't include that in my video, but um, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing some additional videos with this amp. Um, it's pretty cool, so I'll do some um, tone demos and show how it works. Uh, Fender has some software that you can use to update the different tones on this amp. I'll show how that works. Um, so if you're interested, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.